All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Malaya Florendo, trainer with RX Safe Del Norte. I just want to say welcome and thank you, everyone, for joining us for today's uh, Wellness Wednesday afternoon session with the Wellness and Recovery series. Um, today we'll be going over the workshop self care stretching and massage with uh, Stephania Pepinos Gossipal. Uh, excuse me if I uh, mispronounced. Um, and she is our uh, massage therapist joining us today who is going to be walking us through this self care and the importance of, you know, stretching, massage and touch. So, um, uh, Stephanie, Ed, would you like to introduce yourself? Okay, am I unmuted? <laughs> All right, so I'm Stephanie. Um, you said everything except for my hyphenated uh, part of my last name, which is gospel. Um, so Stephania Papinos is my name, and um, I've been doing massage for close to 20 years now. Um, I graduated from the uh, National Holistic Institute back in 2001, and um, I was 19 at the time, so pretty much my whole adult life uh, I've been in the realm of self-care and helping others feel better um, through their wellness journey. So. Um, I'm happy to be here. I'm excited to help people continue their self-care journey and um, recovery definitely needs a lot of self-care in there um, and getting in tune with yourself and your body um, and learning to relax through those stages that are, um, you know, trying. So, All right, so someone's going to put my slides on. <laughs> uh, give us one moment. We're going to go over some quick housekeeping and okay. Pass the mic back to you. Awesome. Um, well, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate having you. Um, and we're very excited uh, for this self-care uh, workshop today for Wellness Wednesdays. Uh, it's wonderful uh, that we get a break from some of these more, you know, uh, presentations and get into a little bit of, you know, learning how to take care of ourselves physically as well. Um, so yeah, we're really excited to have uh, Stephania here today. Um, for those watching, if you are on Zoom, we do want to remind you to please uh, stay muted and have your video off. Of course, um, if you have any questions, you are totally welcome to leave them into the chat and we'll try and get to them as soon as possible. Um, as well, uh, you can also raise your hand if you'd like um, when we open it up for questions. And yeah, um, for those watching Facebook Live, we do want to remind everyone there is about a 45 second delay. So um, you can also leave your questions in the chat on Facebook Live and we'll have monitors um, checking for questions so that we can get those answered for you during the um, question time. So uh, yeah, for those watching, uh, please be respectful, please, um, Again, you're totally welcome to ask for clarification and leave your questions in the chat. So before we get started, we always like to go over a few little housekeeping things just to make sure that everyone's on the same page um, who is present today. And that includes our group agreements. As always, respect and kindness are key. If you are not being respectful and it becomes a persistent issue, you will be removed. Remember to show tolerance and sensitivity for differences. Participants in the group come from different cultural, racial, gender, and sexually oriented backgrounds. So please be aware um, and sensitive to judgmental comments and use tr positive language. Try to stay away from using racial, homophobic, and degrading remarks, of course. This is a safe space and it is free of judgment and it's all right to disagree with someone else's point of view. Uh, however, we just don't put each other down for it. This is a space where participants should feel comfortable to be themselves, share their thoughts and ideas without any worry of punishment or judgment. If you are sharing stories today, 
Uh, we do ask um, whether you're presenting or in the comments, asking questions or leaving comments. Um, if you're sharing personal information, uh, we ask that you try and leave specific names out of your stories um, because it can aid in the spread of rumors and detracts from a point of view uh, or a point of information trying to be communicated. So um, just try and be respectful of others and keep that in mind. Um, and again, ask for clarification if you don't understand. The, that's why we have the chats open and people monitoring. If you have any questions or don't understand some of the um, stuff being talked about today in the workshop, you're totally welcome to leave that in the uh, comments and we'll try and get those answered during uh, the open question time. And as always, uh, we just wanna remind people that Sometimes in these uh, conversations, there is content that may bring up some feelings, concerns, um, heavy emotions, and it may make you feel a certain way. Um, so if you're needing to talk to someone and need to reach out, uh, we have provided some numbers here, such as the mental health hotline for Del Norte, the 24-hour crisis services. Um, so if you're having you know, you're feeling like you need to reach out to somebody, uh, don't hesitate, and these numbers are available. We just want to recognize some heavy conversations sometimes come up in these conversations talking about care for ourselves. Um, so yeah, um, as far as our informed consent and privacy, each person's participation in this presentation is voluntary. Please respect the privacy of others and do not share personal information with anyone else. This training is being recorded and is live on social media. So if you are participating via Zoom, please turn your video camera off and stay muted. And as always, we always love to open it up with a land acknowledgement. Um, I would like to acknowledge I'm coming from Talawa de Ne land and um, I encourage you to find out where you're coming from and acknowledge the land that you are on today. Uh, we wish to acknowledge the lands, many of the lands that we're meeting on virtually, uh, such as the Talawa Dene, the Yurok, Karuk, Hupa, Wiat, and many rancherias such as Elk Valley, Resigini, Big Lagoon, Trinidad, Blue Lake, Table Bluff, and Bronerville. We understand you might be coming from a different area, so um, make sure you acknowledge the land that you are on today. We honor the indigenous peoples who lived together and cared for this land and each other since time immemorial. We honor with gratitude the land itself and the people who have been the stewards of this land for generations. We know the effects of colonization have impacted indigenous people disproportionately. We hope that through this series, we can learn together to help heal and work towards a healthy future. So again, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, remember, you're welcome to leave questions in the comment section on Facebook Live, as well as in Zoom. And I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to our wonderful presenter today. Hi, everyone. Okay, I think, oh, we're, ch we're changing screens. <laughs> Okay, so in case anybody missed who I was, my name is Stephania and I will be presenting a um, presentation today on learning how to relax while in recovery and just daily life through stretching and massage. Um, I'm not sure what I'm seeing. So we are seeing you live right now. So if you want to sh uh, share your slides, um, you would just click the share screen button at the bottom. Okay, so I'm the one sharing the slides this time. <laughs> you want to, or I can do it for you. What do you prefer? I would prefer you do it. That way I don't get messed up going back and forth. <laughs> if that's okay, Jermaine. No problem. All right, thank you so much. All right, so we're gonna start at the beginning. First slide. Um, learning to relax in recovery. Um, this is something that I've kind of touched base with a lot um, in my younger years. And when I found massage therapy, it was actually by accident. 
um, I was trying to get a massage and the school um, had a teaching clinic and they somehow signed me up for a tour of the school instead of getting a massage. So <laughs> um, I'm very blessed and thankful that that came on my path because without having a purpose in my own life, I have no idea where I would have ended up. So um, I feel inspired to tell you that just based on the housekeeping things that we went over. Um, so now we'll talk a little bit about myself, who I am. I am Stephania. Uh, you can call me Steph if that's easier for you. Um, I went to a school called the National Holistic Institute down in Emeryville, which is just east of the um, San Francisco Bay Bridge. And um, it was the first school. They now have several throughout California, um, but this was back in 2001. It was a 720 hour program, which was pretty intense, Monday through Friday. And um, since I completed that uh, back in 2001, I worked at day spas all over um, the Bay Area and the Napa Valley. And when I moved up here, I was working in uh, physical therapy. And that was a whole different realm of things where I learned more specific um, injury rehabilitation. And it put me in line with a lot of other I'll say more diversity. It wasn't just people wanting to relax, but they were really learning to rehabilitate their bodies um, and, of course, their mind because they're, you can't deny that mind-body um, connection. So it really, it really, really helped me to see past just the relaxation factor and the more therapeutic side of it. Um, and then after being in physical therapy for about eight years, I opened up my own practice, which is where I am now. <laughs> We're on quarantine still, so I have not opened up my practice yet, but hopefully soon I'll get back into it. And um, I'm very thankful to be able to still help people because it's been really hard on me um, emotionally and spiritually to not have that outlet of like watching people get better and just seeing their before and after uh, massage. <laughs> um, it's, it's, been hard, but I'm happy to be here and help some people on their wellness journey. Um, the school that I went to, their motto was have work you love. And I was very drawn to that. Um, who doesn't want that? How much of our lives do we spend working? And so if you can spend your life working, doing something that actually brings you joy and fulfillment, it's a wonderful thing. I encourage everyone to find that little niche that really brings you joy. So. Um, I love helping people navigate through their life, their wellness journey, and going through, um, you know, the trials and errors of life. There's always going to be stress. There's always going to be pain. So the more tools we have to get through that gracefully, um, the better off we're going to be. So anyway, that's a little bit about me. Let's go on to what we're going to go through on today's presentation on the next slide. Um, we're going to talk about self-care, what that means, and then we're going to go into some um, stretching techniques, and then we're going to kind of tie it together with some massage techniques. Um, for this presentation today, we're really just going to focus on the neck and shoulders. That's kind of what we have on the, the view, and if I only had uh, two hours to present the whole body, I honestly wouldn't know where to begin, but I think that neck and shoulders is a great place to start because I have not met a single person <laughs> who does not carry stress and tension in their neck and shoulders. So it's a, it's a good place to start. So um, although we're only gonna be focusing on this area, I really want to encourage you to use these same concepts and techniques to do your whole body. So, um, that being said, <laughs> let's go on to um, what self-care actually is. Um, it's a concept that's been going around pretty um, extensively, I would say more so in the last few years, this concept of we actually take care of ourselves. <laughs> when we're little growing up, we rely a lot on our parents, family, and friends to kind of help us realize what we need. Our basic needs are food, water, and shelter. Um, 
And when we're little, we don't have that capability. And as we get older, we're trying to nourish ourselves a little bit more so that we're, we're going beyond just those basic things and we're seeking um, a higher uh, mental capacity to be able to uh, experience life a little bit better than just our basic needs. So um, what we do when we're older is kind of things that we don't really think about. You know, it's not just food, water, and shelter. It's really, well, what's the content of that? Are we getting good food? Are we eating junk food? Strangely enough, sometimes eating junk food is self-care. <laughs> it's giving yourself that ability to say, you know, I'm going to have something that makes me feel good. And sometimes that's sugar for me too. I'm not the only one, I'm <laughs> sure. So um, some, of, some of the things that we do um, will be getting rest, eating healthy foods or bad foods, um, drinking lots of good water. Quality of water, I think, really matters, too. Um, in the Pacific Northwest, we are extremely blessed to have a wonderful water source all around us. And um, if you've been to places, um, Las Vegas is the main place where I'm just like, that water, it's no good. <laughs> so um, drinking good quality water is important. Uh, spending time in nature, taking a bath, having good conversations is one of my favorite things, just sitting on the porch or you know just in your comfy chair whether you're on the phone or um, luckily we have video chat these days so you can talk to family and friends from all over um, and having that time to just sit and laugh and talk about nothing really <laughs> um, also what we're going to kind of focus on today is exercise stretching and massage um, those are great examples of self-care and now we're going to go into the types of self-care. This is just a lovely little presentation slide here where it talks about the four basics of physical, emotional, social, and spiritual self-care. And today we're going to be focusing a little bit more on the physical and emotional side. Um, but I think that also connects to the spiritual side as well. Um, the connection with the mind, body, and having having those moments with yourself where you're sort of realizing what's causing your tension and stress and anxiety and all those ill feelings that you have, especially when you're going through recovery and just trying to maintain, you know, life. Um, so the physical things that we're going to talk about today, obviously are going to be stretching and massage. And um, we're going to go into why we might do that a little bit with the emotional side of it. Um, so let's go on to the next slide about some examples. These aren't really what we're going to be doing much of today, but I wanted to just kind of share with people some examples of what self-care can be. It can be just little things like saying no is one of my favorite things. No, I don't have time in my life right now to be fully there for you. I need to be fully there for me and I cannot be there for you if I'm not ready. I need time for me. And that's a huge thing. I think people don't say no enough. You don't have enough time in your life to say yes to everyone. And that's totally okay. You can always take a step back and say, what do I need right now? What's going to benefit me? If you take a plane, they tell you to put the oxygen mask on yourself first because if you are not full, you cannot give. You cannot give from an empty vessel. So self-care is one of those magical things that really helps you fill your cup so that you're ready to share that with the world and offer all that you are. So it's very important to do these things. I really like the putting yourself first um, just so that you can, you can give. You cannot, you cannot give from an empty vessel. It does not happen. You're going to be taken away or burning the candle at both ends, a lot of people say. Um, so using these just bullets here, it's going to help you dig a little deeper and find out, one, what you're giving too much of, and two, what you need to be able to give. I very strongly believe that as humans, we are givers. We 
love to give. It fulfills us. It makes us feel good. As humans, community is extremely important to us. And without that, we're not living our, our best life and we're not fulfilled in life either. So it's really important to um, be your best by yourself and then you can really encompass that full community, I think. So um, these are some tidbits that you can use to kind of find those bits. And then um, let's go to the next slide where we talk about the benefits of stretching. So stretching is one of those things that we're never really taught, right? Like I remember in junior high and high school, they're like, okay, you're gonna run a mile. But they didn't really show you how to stretch or tell you the benefits of stretching. And so I really wanna point out that your muscles do two things, right? They flex, which we all know, right? Your bicep flexes, every muscle in your body flexes. But the opposite of that is that it stretches. So let's just use the bicep, for example. When your bicep is flexed, your tricep is actually stretching. So every single muscle in your body has a partner. So when one is flexing, the other is stretching. So it's really, really important that you're showing your body and your every muscle in your body that it does two things, because if you only flex it, you're gonna wind up with a really tight muscle that's just stuck and stagnant, and you're not gonna have, you're not gonna have like the ability to have like a solid range of motion, and also your performance is gonna go down. So the first bullet there is increased flexibility and range of motion. So by opening up those fibers and loosening up those fibers, you're going to be able to move those joints that the muscle is actually moving a lot more freely. Um, so you'll find that you'll be able to move better and more efficiently with stretching. Um, and because everything is loosened up, you're going to be less likely to have injuries. So you have a decreased um, uh, injury response, especially if you're doing a hardcore um, exercise or a lifting routine. If you stretch your muscles before and after, you're just tenfold going to be in so much better shape. Another thing is it promotes better posture and reduces uh, muscle soreness. This is really a big one. I find that people really only stretch either before or after any kind of exercise routine. But if you do both, like it's just, it's so much better. So I really encourage you to do that. Um, and with stretching, you're also going to be increasing circulation because like I said, if you're stretching one thing, the other side is going to be flexing. And when you flex, that's actually when the circulation is coming into the body or into those fibers. Um, another benefit is that it calms your mind and it promotes that mind-body connection. And the mind-body connection is one of those things that you know it's there, but I don't feel like we have the proper vocabulary to explain how it's there. We just know that it's there. Um, and there's, there's some science behind it, which is really fascinating. And I encourage you to um, maybe dive a little deeper if this is something that interests you. But there are body charts. You can just go to Google Images um, and search this. But there's body charts that show um, a corresponding emotion with a pain area. So like, for example, um, your lower back. If you have lower back pain, a lot of times that's because of a decreased connection with um, your, uh, your foundation. So your really close family or friends, there's an issue going there. And left or right side, they mean different things. So it's really quite fascinating that through the years, people have actually like studied this and they found correlations. So that's just a tidbit on that mind-body connection, but it's there. There's no denying it. Can't explain it fully, but it's there. So um, we're gonna go into some neck and shoulder stretching now so that we can kind of 
feel what this feels like. So you can either just watch right now, or um, I definitely encourage you to do it with me. If you are a kinesthetic learner, meaning that you um, learn by doing, please do this with me. No one's watching, it's just, it's just us right now. <laughs> so I apologize if I look funky, but uh, I don't mind if you do. <laughs> So basically what we're gonna do is just kind of bring awareness to our neck and shoulders. Oh, did we lose? Oh, we're switching to my video, okay. Um, so what we're gonna do is just be drawing um, attention to our neck and shoulders right now. And a lot of people are very familiar with the shoulder rolls. So we're just gonna roll our shoulders. And a lot of people will tend to just go fast. You will feel so much more going really really slow and really drawing your attention to those neck and shoulders so we're going to just do circles forward and i like to do the full range like as much as i can and this kind of helps you to see where you're tight where do you want to go where do your shoulders want to go and where are they like I don't like that spot. It's too tight right there. So I personally think it's best to go slow. And if you like, you can go a little bit faster to start, but definitely end with the slow, drawn out movements where you're really enunciating the full range that your shoulders will do here. So that's forward. And then we're gonna go backwards, which for me is definitely more of a challenge. Um, and this kind of shows me, and if you're the same as me, where you have limitations. Where are you stronger? I'm definitely stronger in my front than my back. I'm more forward. Doing the work I do, I'm more forward. If you're at a desk, you're going to be more forward. So really stretching out that the back is, is hard. So we just go nice and slow. It doesn't really matter what it looks like. What matters is what it feels like. So those are our shoulder rolls. And again, we can, we can speed it up and we can do it nice and slow, really get that full range. Another thing with the shoulder rolls is just lifting up and then letting it fall. How many of you wear your shoulders as earrings? <laughs> When I was in massage school, my teacher would always say, don't wear your shoulders as earrings. Just let them down. Just let them down. So this is a really good exercise just to teach you, oh, I am up. And just letting them fall. Tense and relax. Okay, so now that we've got some good blood flow there, I feel it feels quite lovely. We're going to go into some of the basic ranges that your neck does. It does side bending, which is like ear to shoulder. It does rotation, which is chin to shoulder. It does flexion, which is chin down to chest. And it does extension, which would be the back of your head backwards looking up. So let's start with just side bending. So ear to shoulder. It's very important when you're doing these stretches that you have good posture. You're not hunched over and leaning your head over. You're, you're upright. Um, it's, also a really good idea, especially when you're first getting started, to do this in front of a mirror. And you'll find, you'll find yourself creeping forward. <laughs> so you can put yourself in check by just taking, this, taking the step back and letting your head go back. So ear to shoulder. And I, I find that my shoulder wants to go up to help it helps, it tries to help assist. So you really want to anchor that down and just let it open up. Um, you should be mindful of this area. This is where you're going to feel it. This is what we're opening up. But in this area, you have three muscles called your scalenes. There's a middle, anterior, and posterior. So front, middle, and back of your scalenes. And in your scalenes, you have your brachial plexus, which is a fancy word for the nerve supply of your whole arm. 
So when these guys get tight, you can be pinching on those nerves. So if you have any numbness or tingling or cold or hot sensations that happen down your arm when doing this stretch, just loosen up a little bit and find a place forward or backward that you're not doing that. If you, if you feel the nerve while doing any stretches, you're basically irritating that nerve and it's going to tell you later and you will be upset and it's going to make you not want to do it. So trust me on this. <laughs> if you have any nerve symptoms while doing this, you need to modify, do less of a stretch or change your positioning a little bit so that you're not going to feel those symptoms. So opening up ear to shoulder, you're going to just go nice and slow taking nice deep breaths in. Exhale, I always imagine my shoulder just gently being pulled down. You will find that your body relaxes on the exhale. So you really wanna use that exhale to go a little bit further if you can. And once you get this opened up a little bit, mind you, it takes about 30 seconds for a muscle to start relaxing, for those fibers to start opening up. 30 seconds seems like a long time, but when you're working on loosening things up, it's quick. <laughs> so once you have it open a little bit, you can take your hand and place it just to give you a little bit more leverage there, a little bit of leverage to pull. I'm a little bit tight here, guys. So um, it's very interesting to just change your head position just a little bit, just a little bit forward and backward. You will feel this stretch in all different places, all around the sides of your neck, all the, I feel it all the way back to behind the ear on the mastoid process there. And that's totally okay. This is part of that mind-body connection. This is you telling your brain where it's tight. This is you telling your body where you're holding tension. If you don't know where you're holding tension, you're not gonna be able to release it, right? So we need that connection. It's really, really important. So me personally, I'm most tight going forward a little bit. That's where I, that's where I feel it. And did you see my shoulder drop? <laughs> see that shoulder drop? That's that means it's a release. Deep breaths. And when you feel it release, that's how you know that you're ready to do the next stretch. Okay, so you're gonna gently take your hand off your head, take that pressure off, and then you're gonna slowly come back to neutral. Oh, it feels so much open and just me personally right now, I feel this side is so much different than this side. So now we're going to do the other side so that we can balance out, right? So I didn't want to do that first. So first things first, we're just going to lean over ear to shoulder. Just feel that ear coming slowly over to your shoulder and remember to breathe. And if you're looking in a mirror when you do this, watch your shoulder line. Because if you're doing this, that's your body compensating. That's your body saying, nope, I can do that range, but you're not. You wanna keep your shoulders level and just move your head. If you sit in a, um, like a dining room chair or a chair that has a bottom, then you can hang on to the bottom of the chair and that will kind of anchor that arm down. Right now I'm sitting on a, an exercise ball because that feels, feels better for me <laughs> than a hard chair. Um, but I, I definitely do these sitting at the dining room table all the time and just anchoring that arm down and just letting it open up. And you can probably see on mine, this guy right here, that's my scalene. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but it's popped up 
So it's definitely really tight. So we're going to take some nice deep breaths and really focus on letting it go. And on that exhale, I felt my shoulder drop. So now I know I'm ready to take my hand and go a little bit more. And I definitely want to encourage you to kind of change your access a little bit. Find that really tight spot. You're going to use this feedback later when we're actually doing some massage on our neck. So just, just be mindful and feel where you're holding tension. Feel where you're holding tension and take note of that. Another good exercise to do is to think about just clearing your mind and then think about what pops in your head. And a lot of times, this is a good indication of what's causing that tension, what's causing you to hold tension in that spot. Oh, I felt another release. That's good. All right. And sometimes you just kind of got to shake out your arm a little bit just to really let it. So we're going to go back to neutral. Ah, some shoulder rolls just to kind of find that balance again. So that's side bending, ear to shoulder, ear to shoulder. And now we're going to go into rotation. So rotation is chin to shoulder, right? This one, I'm not very tight in. I have really good range of motion here. Uh, definitely more limited for me personally on the side bending. So on the rotation, there's a few different ways you can do to push it a little bit further. I personally find it best to just take your hand and push a little bit further there. Deep breaths. Find those areas where you're holding that tension. Find those thoughts. Find those thoughts that are increasing that tension. Think about what you can do to stop, to stop that from happening. So find where you're starting to feel that stretch. Inhale, exhale, push a little further. And again, you want to watch that shoulder line. Make sure you're not lifting up. Make sure it's anchored down. And although we have similar muscles doing side bending and rotation, there are some differences. So you will feel this in different places and you can use these tools to identify where you're sore. You don't need to know the name of the muscle. You just need to feel it. That's what's important is feeling it, right? And focusing your attention on that. So of course now I did one side, I feel off balance. So we're gonna do the other side. Just those simple breaths. Breath is a magical, magical thing. It's a key to life. Without breath, we simply cannot survive. 
most of our neck muscles attach onto our first and second ribs, which we use to inflate our lungs. And so your breath is very much connected to neck and shoulder tension. You definitely want to be able to inhale fully and you'll feel, you'll feel your chest come up, right? Your lungs are full. Exhale them down and relax. And blow out all that air. One more. All right, now we're gonna come back to center. Just kind of move around. Do a little figure eight move, it's good. All right, so now we've done some major, major stretching. We've really worked on opening up the sides of our neck. And now I wanna focus a little bit on the back side of our neck. So um, next we're going to do the, uh, the looking forward, or forward fold, I think is what I called it. <laughs> Um, so basically what you're going to do is just look down and I want to just throw a disclaimer out there. If you have issues with your disc specifically, leaning forward or back may potentially cause you some harm. So it's very important that you do this, um, mindfully and it's a minimal thing. It's the awareness of trying to cause your body good feelings, not harm. Stretching and massage is not a no pain, no gain. I don't think anyone should even work out that way. I know many will disagree with me, but <laughs> if you hurt from doing this, you, you won't want to do it again, or you'll want to wait a week to recover from just pushing yourself too far. So you don't want to do that. This is something that you want to be able to do anytime, any place without negative effects. That's not what we're trying to do. So we gently want to do this. We want this to be a positive experience for our mind and body so that we do it more frequently because it's good for us. And it's a great way to utilize your time. So forward fold, you're just going to basically look down, turning your head. And again, if you feel any discomfort back here, don't go that far. Just go to just before that pain and stay there. Focus on your breath and just letting it open up. And you'll find that as things open up, you'll be able to go a little bit further and a little bit further. And we definitely want to make sure we're having good posture here. So I need to check myself. So you take a few deep breaths. Close your eyes. Exhale, letting it go. I like to inhale and fill myself, fill, fill my vessel with good thoughts, good affirmations of self, and exhaling the bad. And that can look like so many things. I love doing this in the sunlight too. The warmth of it really helps to just open things up. So once you get a little bit open here, you're gonna take your hands kind of behind your head, uh, the kind of the base of the skull, just above your hairline, really. And just putting a little bit of extra pressure there, a little bit of leverage to get it a little more open. So some people like it this way, some people like it this way. It really depends on what your neck likes. This way compresses my spine a little bit, so I prefer this way. Because the weight of my hands here is not what I want. We, we don't want to go against gravity, right? So just pulling up gently with some nice deep breaths to inhale. 
and exhale. Inhale, filling yourself with love. Exhale, letting go all that self-doubt that we have. Inhale, letting yourself feel that love. Exhale, let it go. Sometimes I feel motivated to just take my thumbs here on this one, especially. And I'm just going up my neck, just encouraging it to go a little bit further. Like in the inhale and exhale. And then when you feel that release, you know you're ready to come out of it. And don't worry about how long that takes you. We're all different, and this is for your benefit. If you don't get that release, stay with it. Tell yourself good things. Tell your body it's safe to relax. It's okay to let go. So much of our lives, we're hanging on constantly tense it doesn't matter what you're doing you could just be driving a car or you could be taking a hike you're constantly flexed and ready alert right when you're stretching it's the one time where it's perfectly okay to just let things go it's encouraged so utilize it <laughs> okay so now i feel like we did a lot of forward stuff i let that go i hope you guys did too and now we're going to do the looking back. So um, I called it looking up. So what we're going to do with this one, your neck muscles come down, the ones that we're going to stretch right now, and they attach right here on the, the points of your collarbone there. Okay, your flat book, you want to get fancy. <laughs> so what I like to do is I literally, and just in my neutral state, nice and tall, and I'm pinning that down. Okay, I'm pinning that down. And then I look up. I'm pinning it down and I'm looking up. Now when you do this, make sure your shoulders are back so that you're in a safe position to do this. And my neck just cracked, that's good. And you can even do a hand over hand, whatever you feel comfortable with. So much of our life is forward. We don't look up to the stars enough. Stretching out, opening up this side. And you know what's here? Your throat chakra. <laughs> throat chakra. All those things you didn't say. All those things you still want to say. Opening up. And letting that come out. Open up that communication to yourself. Whether it's positive or perhaps negative. Maybe you're slightly disappointed. It's okay. You can still encourage yourself that you'll do better. You'll get better and you'll use resources available to you to do your best. And let me tell you, your best is good enough. So we're opening up the front of our neck. Another point here on the emotional side is feeling vulnerable. This is a scary area. A lot of trauma can happen here, right? You can easily die from having this area exposed. When you think about wolves, 
they protect this area. They also go for that area. So this is a this is kind of a scary, intimidating area to open up. But when you're in a safe place, I strongly encourage you to give yourself some time to open up. If you don't feel this enough, you can start leaned back and go even further. It just kind of depends on where you are. All right, I'm gonna show you one other thing that's very similar to here, and it's just basically doing what we're doing right now, but we're gonna isolate and do half at a time because I feel like this is an important thing to really open up. So um, just focus on one side. I'm gonna focus on my left side right now. So taking where that collarbone is, mine's right here. So I take that corner and I pull down and then I look the opposite way and up. Oh boy. This is a good one, guys. Remember to breathe. These guys all attach onto your ribs. If you're anxious, stressed, you're shallow breathing, you're not fully exhaling. And when you don't fully exhale, you're not allowing these muscles to relax. They're constantly in the flexed position. We wanna give them the opportunity to stretch, unwind, and relax. And you'll feel either your head drop or your shoulder. And when you feel that, you'll know that it's time to do the other side. So slowly come out of that. And we're gonna do the other side. So now I'm on my right side. I find my, the point of my clavicle there, sternum, clavicle. And you're gonna pin it down and then look the opposite upward direction. And again, we're opening up. We're letting ourselves be vulnerable. It's not something we do enough. Most of the time, we're not allowed to, right? We're supposed to be hard. But we don't, we don't always need to be that way. We need to give ourselves the grace to be able to be vulnerable. Now I'm curious, who's more tight on their right and who's more tight on their left? <laughs> and different areas of your body will be different on each side, right? It just depends on what's going on in your life and how you've been conditioned to respond to that. All right, I felt that drop. So that was good for me. Hope you guys are getting some release too. All right, my neck feels so full of life. I have a great amount of blood flow going up into my brain now. I feel good and I you guys join me in that. I hope that you're feeling all that loveliness just flowing through you, that life force. It's a beautiful thing. All right, so now that we've loosened up, now we're gonna go into um, our next slide, which would be the benefits of massage. This is my, uh, my highlight. <laughs> I absolutely love massage therapy. Um, it's a great way to naturally help so many ailments. I personally believe the power of touch really is infinite um, based on your ability to both give and receive. And when we are massaging ourselves and doing that self-care, that self-massage, it's, it's like a double benefit. 
you're learning to trust your own touch and giving yourself that freedom to feel what that really feels like. And you're in complete control of it too, so it's good. So some of the main benefits here are that you're gonna help relieve stress. And everyone has stress. I've met thousands of people. I have never met a person who didn't have stress, at least at some point in their life. Um, it also helps to relieve pain and tension and anxiety. And of course, when you're doing those things, you're gonna be releasing endorphins. And endorphins are really important, especially with recovery, because your, your brain is sort of programmed to have that, um, that response from those opiates, right? You're like, oh, that's good. I like that. My brain, my brain likes that. So if you can get those natural endorphins from something that's not going to harm you, you really should do that. You're reprogramming your brain to like things that are good for it, not bad. So releasing endorphins, of course, we're going to be increasing circulation. We're going to be drawing uh, blood flow to the areas that we're going to be massaging. And of course, we're gonna improve our range of motion because we're going to be loosening up those tissues. Your joints will be able to move a lot more freely because of that. It's a great, great, great benefit. Um, and because you're learning to relax those tissues, you're gonna have a better sleep. Um, if anyone has a hard time falling asleep, I definitely wanna encourage you to do this routine that we're doing. Um, before you go to bed, when you sleep, I feel like that's when your body is rejuvenating itself, it's healing itself. Our bodies are miraculous. They do wonderful things. And a lot of that magic happens when you're sleeping. <laughs> it's from the subconscious, it just does what it needs to do. So if you can improve that sleep, you're going to be able to heal a lot better. You'll have a better rest. And you, I'm sure you've felt if you don't get well rest, you're not your best. You can't give your best then, right? Um, so another thing is promoting relaxation and enhancing performance. So it's sort of, um, it's optimal to be able to have your muscles be free of tension and pain so that you can move. That's how your body functions. Your muscles move your bones. So if your muscles are bound up and tight, those bones aren't gonna move, so you're gonna have very little movement in your body. So those are some of the basic benefits of massage therapy, and it's all through touch. So our next slide is specific to the benefits of touch. And like I said, this is a, um, this is really an infinite uh, benefit because touch is one of those things where we, it's one of the first things we feel, right? We have it when we're in our parents' womb, when we're in our mom's womb, we feel that womb against us. We rub up against it, we kick it, we punch it, we rub our head against it, right? Um, if you've ever felt a woman's pregnant belly, you have felt that happen. That is touch in its first form. And then when we, of course, are born, that touch is all around us. It's welcoming, welcoming us into the world. Um, and then as we're nurtured as infants, um, we, we have that touch from our caregiver. Um, so with touch, we, we know that studies have shown that oxytocin is released, which is known as the love hormone. Um, it's what happens when humans touch each other. So that has all sorts of side effects, usually positive, right? <laughs> um, and that gives us a sense of love, love and belonging. And that's sort of in our hierarchy of needs. If we want to get out of that that uh, mindset of just needing your basic needs met, just food, water, and shelter. And you can go above that a little bit. You're gonna be wanting that love and belonging. And I think this is something that we all struggle with 
Um, we all want that lovely, loving sense of community that we're accepted and that we belong in that community and that um, no matter what, we're, we could do whatever and we'd still be accepted and loved. So um, I think that when we touch someone, including ourselves, we're showing that we care and that we're expressing our love and that feeling that you're welcome and you're accepted as you are. Um, and this is something that's been in cultures all over, laying on of the hands and uh, quantum healing. The power of your touch is so great that there's even people who can, you know, actually benefit you without the physical touch. They're able to use their energy in such a way that they don't need actual contact. Um, I've dabbled with this, <laughs> but I can't control it. I'm not a master in those studies, but there are people out there. I've felt it myself and it is absolutely amazing. Um, so that's very cool. All right, so those are some of the benefits of touch. It's one of our first senses and it's very, very important. So now we're gonna use some of that touch to do some um, massage on ourselves. So I'm going to get myself situated here um, by turning around. So give me just a sec. I hope that's a good view. All right. So um, I'm going to just show you some basic techniques on how to massage your neck and shoulders. And I'm showing you this way because I want to focus on the back. We kind of did the front with the stretches. So now we're going to focus on massaging those areas. So the first thing we're going to do is just um, using both hands on our upper traps, we're going to gently squeeze. This is the motion we're doing, okay? Almost like a, a one-handed clap. Can you do that? So what we're doing is just finding that meaty part. These are your upper traps right here. Finding that meaty part, and you're just going to gently squeeze. So what we're doing here is we're bringing our awareness, but we're also bringing blood flow, okay? And with that blood, this is our life force, right? Our blood is our life force. Like breath, we need blood to survive. So I like to just take a few minutes and just bring that blood. I start at the, the meatiest part I can grab, and then I work it up. Anyone who gets headaches, this is a great one for you. Just increasing that blood flow so that the head doesn't need to pound to get blood flow to the brain, right? So I'm just squeezing. I really like to um, alternate hands. As you can see, that's what I keep, I keep going to that move. Um, I think that this just really helps me to focus on one side. So I do both. And then I kind of alternate. And you can also, if you need to take a rest break with one hand, you can do one handed. Or you can do both. And I, I also like to, sorry, Tags in the way there. I also like to squeeze up the neck. So just opening up that, that poor neck. It holds so much tension. We don't give our necks enough credit. It's holding up an eight pound brain all day. <laughs> Okay, so once we got some good blood flow there, now you can start doing some more intricate work 
So my next bullet point is um, just taking your fingertips and walking down from the base of the skull, down the neck, to the upper traps, okay? Now I'm gonna show you with just one side here, just so we can kind of do some focus. So um, the base of your skull is where you have all kinds of muscle attachments. There's so many muscles that are in this area that help to support your, your neck or that compromise your, your, uh, your neck to help hold up your head and to move it. So what we're gonna do is just take those fingertips and just trace along that base of the skull. There's lots of meat up in there if you really work it. Um, for those of you that do get headaches, there's a point right in that little nook where your spine comes up and it meets the base of your skull. There's a little nook right there. And that pressure point is GB20. And that is very, very beneficial for helping with headaches. So you can find it with your finger or your thumb and just hold it. And again, using your breath to help you relax. I don't personally have a headache, but I definitely feel tension there. So it's a good time to let it go. That's what we're doing today. There it went. I felt the shoulder drop. <laughs> All right, so let's go back to what we're doing. Um, the, I know a lot of people are going to want to use your fingers, but if you're like me, your sense of touch is so much stronger in your thumb <laughs> that you're just going to want to go to that. So I encourage you to do both. There's really no wrong way to do this unless it's hurting you. That's the only thing you could do wrong is cause harm to yourself. We're not trying to do that. We're trying to nourish and nurture ourselves. So what we're gonna do is just keep going with the, the thumb or fingertip, whatever you like. I seem to be very drawn to the uh, base of the skull for myself. And then we're going to go work our way down uh, just the side of your spine with the fingertips or thumb. Um, and so these muscles go in different directions, okay? So you can go with the muscle fibers or you can go against them. If you're going with the muscle fibers, you're increasing the capability of stretch. You're promoting it to be longer, right? Does that make sense? So right now I'm going with the muscle fibers. I'm pulling it, opening it up, and going this way, I'm going against the muscle fibers. And when you go against the muscle fibers, what you're doing is actually breaking down the adhesive tissue or knots. <laughs> those harder parts of your tissue that um, the best way I could describe it would be, uh, you know, if you have a package of spaghetti, all the noodles are going in the same direction, right? They're all lined up nice, pretty in the box. And then when you cook that spaghetti, it's like a bowl of just all those fibers going in different directions. And that's basically what a knot is. Those fibers are all going in different directions. So by using your fingertips, you're basically ironing it out and making those fibers go in the same direction. Okay, so we're going to use our fingertips to go up and down the neck. Now remember when we were stretching and I said, pay attention to where you feel, where you feel that stretch. We're using that feedback right now. 
So I felt it all in here. There's the guy. I found him. <laughs> That's the one. Right there. So what I'm going to do is this third bullet on my slide. Finding trigger points. These are the knots. These are that harder tissue where you're holding tension. Okay, and you can just rock your fingers back and forth on it. Focusing on your breath. Exhale, push in. And just promoting it to relax, encouraging it to let go. Telling it, it doesn't need to hang on right now. Telling it you're thankful for all it's done to hold your head up high. But right now is it's time to rest. Right now it's safe to let go. All right, so that's a good one. Um, trigger points are going to be all over. And this really helps you to identify where you hold tension in your body. And like I said before, this is where we do that mind-body connection. What's your thought when holding and finding that point? What, what comes into your head? What's causing that tension? Is it a fight you had? Is it feeling uncared for? Is it feeling that life's just too hard? And that's when you kind of do the opposite. And you send good affirmations, good positive vibes to that area. I know life's hard, but look how far I've come. Look what I've accomplished. I'm proud. I'm proud I made it this far. And you'll find that it diminishes. It's able to let go. You have that mind-body connection. You're physically telling your mind to tell your body, it's okay. You've done good. We're going to relax. And we can hold tension again another time, but not right now, right? All right, so there's a few of my trigger points. I got that one, that one. <laughs> and then um, that's good for the neck. Uh, I have found that many, many people hold tension. Base of the skull and kind of the middle of the neck there. You know what attaches to the middle of the neck? This guy, he's about that big, levator scapula. And basically what levator scapula does is it raises your shoulder. So all of us who carry tension like this and we walk around like this, constantly tense, you're going to have a knot right there at the corner of that shoulder blade. So feel that spot on your upper trap. I recommend using your opposite hand. So I'm not gonna use my right hand on my right side because that makes me lift. So you're gonna use your left. And find that spot. I find just rolling over it slowly, back and forth. Drawing your mental awareness to that tissue. Wondering what's holding that tension. Why am I wound up? What's going on in my life that's causing this? And what can I do to decrease that? Well, I'm happy to tell you that you can do some stretching and self-massage techniques to help decrease that tension. 
All right, this is a good spot where you kind of do a combination of stretch and massage. So I'm holding this spot, I'm anchored down, my posture is good, and I look away. I do the opposite, right? Does this action? I'm gonna do this action. Because if this is what's flexed constantly, I have to give it the opportunity to stretch. I have to give it the opportunity to let go. And you can find just turning your head or bringing your head closer to your chest and going back, you'll feel those fibers move. And you'll feel where it's ultimately the tightest, stay right there. Take a deep breath. Exhale, really feel your head let go. Feel that shoulder drop and relax. And if you can, push a little firmer. Pull a little bit more tension there. Tension in your finger, not your shoulder. Oh, I felt it drop. <laughs> Yay, I did it. I hope you did too. Okay, so we got that side good. I showed you my fancy technique for that upper trap, so I have to give a little love to this side now. And this might be a better view for you to see um, also. So we're gonna find just that little, there's a little trough on the side of your vertebrae there. So you find those little pokey parts, spinous process, and you're gonna go just to the side of that. And that's where you'll find, oh boy, lots of tension there. So again, I'm just finding those spots and I'm just going back and forth, back and forth on those fibers. And that brings awareness. That's telling my brain to tell my body, you have tension there. You can relax. And we do that by mentally being aware of where we're holding tension and mentally being aware of our breath and how to let go and relax. And once it lets go, you can move down a little bit further down, different pathway. I still have a little bit right there. And if, you, if you're having a hard time getting it to let go, change your position. Maybe you need to tilt your head a, a different direction. This is just you getting to know your body, right? So we're gonna do some more walking down. I feel like I got that pretty good for me. So now we're gonna get into that upper trap. Now I have a I definitely have some tension on this side too. And I'm doing that same technique. I'm just rolling over that kind of knot that I have there. And let me tell you, I have not met a single person, the thousands of people I've touched, I have not met a single person who didn't have a knot here. <laughs> We're all naughty here. But learning to you know, help it to relax and help it not be so tense is really what we want to do. So just gently going over it as much as you're comfortable with. Oof. And again, using your, uh, your head position 
as an extra tool to offer more of a stretch. You're sort of tricking your brain to making it stretch. I pin it down and I look away. And that's making it that much deeper of a stretch. All right, now that we've got that pretty good, I feel like we're doing good here. All right, so now we've got both sides really nice and loosened up. I probably have some good pink color going on there. That just shows we've got some good blood flow. The last thing I like to do is just use the knuckles to kind of iron things out and smooth. Okay, so you can just use, instead of just your fingertips, which your fingertips are gonna be sore um, the more you, you're pushing with your fingertips. So you can always alternate knuckles, fingertips, thumbs, so that you don't feel that stiffness. So using your knuckles, you're just gonna, I like to go up, up the neck, getting that circulation up into the brain, and we're just smoothing it out. We're just ironing it out. And then once you get it up, then you're gonna go down the traps. So you can use just your knuckles that way, or you can do the yummy part, I think it's yummy, to kind of roll, just kind of roll the knuckles. Oh, that looks Oh. <laughs> All right. I feel like we did good there. We got the shoulders nice and loosened up. Now I kind of want to show you some things on the front. I hope you were able to see. Um, some details there, but I feel like you need to learn a little bit about the, the hand positions of all of this. So, um, let me get adjusted here. Okay. So when you're doing the, um, the squeezing of the upper traps, you're basically just taking your hands and bringing your fingertips down to your palms, like the one-handed clap, so you're pinching them and able to pull up even. And I also do that on the neck. Okay. And with your fingertips, let's see if I can do this. I do have some good pink color going on. With the fingertips, you're gonna find that muscle line and go just down. And just walking it down. So let's kind of take some time to tie these stretches and massages together. So do you remember the stretches that we did on the front where we did the side bending and we did the rotation and we did the forward fold? Oh, I have a message. When doing massage, is it best to use hand to skin Hand to skin, I know that you, yes. Um, I think it is best to do hand on skin, um, which you, I have an oil that I use just to kind of give you a little bit more glide. Um, 
You can also, if you have a shirt or sweater that's covering your whole area, you can work over that and it'll be fine. Um, what you don't want is to have that drag. So you can either use some sort of lubricant. I personally use sunflower oil, um, but you can use coconut oil or um, olive oil if that's what you have in your kitchen works fine, but your skin is the largest organ in your body. And so it's very important to me that you use a good quality product to nourish your skin because your, your skin is absorbing everything that's in that oil. So I'm a big fan of organic. <laughs> Um, you don't want pesticides and stuff being pushed into your skin, right? Um, but ideally, yes, you do want to have that skin on skin contact from fingertips, knuckles to the body part that you're working on. Definitely. And someone said their right side is so much tighter. <laughs> I would guess that you're right handed. <laughs> and me personally, like, uh, the the side stretches I was tighter on my right but the rotation or I'm sorry side bend was my left but the rotation my right was so I would guess that uh, that has something to do with the way I sleep <laughs> so all right let's get back into doing some of um, the the combination of stretch and massage right we kind of did just the stretch and the last thing we did was we kind of showed, or when I went through the stretches, um, I kind of showed you this one where we kind of do the massage with stretch. And this is a wonderful technique that really, I don't think gets enough credit. Um, it's harder for a massage therapist to do this sort of technique because it, it requires an extra set of hands, really, ultimately, right? <laughs> But on yourself, you can somehow do it more because you're in control of how you're moving your body. So for example, let's just start with the side bending. So that's this one, right? Ear to shoulder. So if we're doing this, what we're gonna do is physically with our other hand, make it stretch. This really ultimately helps to sort of confuse your brain and trick it, sort of manually forcing it to stretch. Whereas if, I, if I'm your massage therapist, it's hard for me to hold your head, move it over to the side, and then work it. I do it. <laughs> it definitely requires some grace and um, fluidity to be able to pull it off to where you can get that same feeling of doing it yourself. So some things you can definitely do um, better yourself. So for me, like I said before, my left side on the side bending was way more tight. So let me actually turn a little bit. I think that might be better to see. Okay. All right, so if I'm side bending, always find your good posture. Make sure your feet are flat. Check in with your body, make sure you're straight. Or if you have a mirror in front of you, it's really ideal. Um, so you're gonna start in neutral, find that tight spot. So when you stretch, what's, where is it jumping out? For me, it's right here, it's right there, I can pinpoint it. So what I'm gonna do is find that spot, come to neutral, push on that spot, and then make it stretch physically making it stretch. I come back to neutral, ooh, it just popped. <laughs> so I push in a little bit harder if I can, make it stretch. And you can go slow. Ooh, give it a little jostle. Focus on your breath. Your breath is so important. There is a, a definite thing right here for me. I hope that you guys are finding some spots and learning some stuff about your body too. 
So I'm gonna just work it a little bit more, but I'm gonna switch to my thumb so my fingers are a little sore from just that spot. So I'm gonna go in as hard as I can without pain, without pain, without numbness, tingling, or any sensations, and then make it stretch. And if you keep going in and out of it, it changes the dynamic of how it's able to really open up and let go. And then remember when we were talking about these stretches, how you could um, just vary that, that degree of uh, whether your head is more forward or backward. So let me find that spot again when I, find, when I do that stretch. There it is. Okay, so right there. I'm gonna pin that tissue down. I'm gonna lock it in. And then I'm going to find, oh, that's the one. So going just a little bit forward for me, that way. That's the one for me, guys. So I'm gonna just take some deep breaths. And just know there's, there's no time frame for this. You're giving yourself and body time and space to unwind, learn, and relax. I wish they taught in school that it was okay to relax. <laughs> we get stuck in the rat race of life and we forget to live and relax and enjoy, right? And sometimes it's just not ready to let go. And that's okay. That's okay. And maybe this spot for me doesn't want to let go because it's not ready at this current time. Or maybe I'm just not able to be as vulnerable as I need to be at this point in my life to really let that go. And that's okay. I'm still doing something that's beneficial for it. I'm still encouraging it to let go and relax. So I think it's important to, you know, take note of it's okay if it doesn't want to let go at this current time. Maybe when I stretch out tonight before bed, maybe that's when it's ready to. So that's okay. All right. So there was another spot for me that was a little bit lower. So I'm going to do that stretch again. Yeah, I feel it right in here, which there's a little muscle right there. So... I can feel, and again, this is an area, like right in here, is where you have that brachial plexus. So you have all those nerves coming down and they branch out and go down your arm. So we wanna be mindful of that and make sure that when you're touching, you're on a, um, not on a, the nerve. You wanna be on that muscle or tendon. So I'm gonna come, after I pinpoint it rear, I'm gonna come back to neutral, nice and straight and tall, and then I'm going to push harder, no numbness or tingling, and then make it stretch a little bit more. And you can just kind of go back and forth, help it to let go. And another thing I like to do is um, jostle. It's almost like a, like a rag doll kind of feeling where you just kind of lose control a little bit. We all need that, right? We all need to just be like, ah, let go. I really like the feeling of um, like bending over and just letting my head go down towards my feet and then just like moving my head and letting it, letting gravity sort of do the opposite thing. <laughs> it feels so good. All right, so um, with the side bending, 
I feel like we got that pretty good. And I, I hope that you guys have seen some really good techniques on how to let this go. Um, another thing I wanted to point out was sometimes you need to let go of another point, like this one for me. I think I had to let this one go before I could let this one go. So it's sort of like a puzzle sometimes to figure out which one you need to do first, second, or whatever. And, and you'll just learn. The more you spend time with your body and bring that awareness, you're going to learn not just where you hold tension, but how to let it go. And that's such a key component in learning to relax. So I need to switch sides and do the right. So we're gonna go over something a little bit different on this side. Um, I wanna show you, um, which is gonna be hard to do because I'm not sitting, I'm sitting on a ball. Um, but if you're sitting on a, like a dining room chair where you can really anchor that hand down, I'm gonna just sit on it. So that, that's gonna be my anchor so that you can really isolate that shoulder. And then you can find those spots again. And so what I'm gonna do now, I'm physically holding that shoulder down, right? Get my hair out of the way. And now what I'm gonna do is use my brain and my own strength of this side to physically stretch this side. And that gives me a free hand to be able to massage, right? All right, so we're gonna check our posture. And then we're gonna work our way into finding those spots, those trigger points, which I need to kind of warm this tissue up a little bit. Maybe a little bit of oil here. There we go. Okay. So if we were to walk down, remember we talked about walking down the back of the neck. And also do that same technique on the front. Oof. That's the one. I wish you could hear the clunk. <laughs> Sometimes when joints crack and stuff, I, I just say, that's my body's rhythm. It's got a little rhythm in there. <laughs> All right, so I have a little spot there, and this is definitely a common area to hold tension. So I know I'm kind of moving fast so that I can just kind of uh, warm it up a little because I worked so long on the other side. And what that does too, when you focus on one side, all that blood's going over here. So now we have to, you know, kind of push it back over and say, okay, we're gonna work over here now. So um, that's okay. All right, so let's find our, our pinpointing spot. So when we do that stretch, which I might need a little assistance to find it on the sick thumbs tight. So for me, it's that upper trap. I feel like um, maybe I need to turn again here. That might be better. Sorry guys, I don't have a, a cameraman that's <laughs> following me around. Okay, so when I turn, do the side bending to my left, I feel that right there, right on the top of that shoulder blade, okay? And this is that spot I was talking about. I have yet to met me, a single person who does not have a knot here. If you find someone or if you do, let me know. <laughs> it would be a miracle. All right, so we're going to find that spot and make sure that we're sitting up straight. So let me do that stretch one more time. Okay, I can pinpoint it and then I come back to neutral, push as hard as I can comfortably, and then look away. And there's multiple techniques here, right? We're pinning and we're stretching at the same time. 
but also um, you're, you're varying your speed in doing that, right? If you just hold it and push, 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 push. It's different than pushing and stretching, pushing, stretching, pushing, stretching. So I recommend both. And this guy for me just isn't terribly tight, but I'm sure, I think it was Jermaine that said her right side was really tight. <laughs> this is a good one. And um, something to think about is if your hands can't take this to the extent of what I'm doing. My hands have been doing this for like almost 20 years now, so they're, they might be a little bit stronger for this sort of movement. Yours aren't necessarily used to that unless you're doing a lot of gardening or um, making bread or something like that, where you're you know kneading and using your fingertip strength a lot. So that's okay. Um, there are some techniques that you can use with a cane. And just like a regular walking cane. I wish I had one here to demonstrate a little bit, but you know, it has a hook. So when you have that hook, you can have the, the, the length of the cane in front of you and you can pinpoint that. It's perfect for that spot. You just hold it down and then you would do the same technique where you're stretching it while you have it pinned down, okay? A lot of people have canes around and if you don't, you can always find them usually at um, thrift stores or Goodwills. They are a great tool to have. They make ones that are like self-massage canes and they're a ridiculous amount of money and you, you, don't, you don't need that. Uh, Jermaine has seen a tool that looks like an S. Yeah, yeah. But really the part that's effective for this area is that first part of the S, that half S um, or the cane, the top of the cane. And then you have that whole long stick to be able to get that proper leverage. So the, the canes work well and they're, you know, you don't have to order one on Amazon. <laughs> you can just uh, find someone that's not using one or, um, you know, find one at Goodwill. Okay, so I know we did quite a bit on the side bending. So the rotation is um, just working a little bit different muscle group. And that's the one where we're doing the chin to the shoulder both directions. So for this one, um, did we, did we lose signal? Are we good? Um, so for this one, we're going to turn, but when we're turning, because we can't do this and massage, we're going to just manually turn while we're pinning these tissues down. So when you do the stretch, you're doing it with your hand to sort of feel what's jumping out. Where in this side of your neck do you feel that tension? So let's see for me. I don't even feel any on that side. That's a good sign. <laughs> let's try this side. Okay, so this side, I definitely feel here. Um, oof, yeah. So this, you can actually see it, huh? This right here. This is your sternocleidomastoid, or SCM, we'll call it, just for short. So this guy is actually what makes you rotate. You can see it. I totally see it flex when I turn. So what we're going to do is work on that guy. Okay, so we're gonna hold it and turn, and hold it and turn. And actually, you'll feel that um, it's flexing because I'm, I'm doing the opposite. <laughs> so what we wanna do is stretch it, right? So turning that way is not going to do that. So for here, we want to go not on your SCM. If you're going to rotate the opposite way is when you'd want to work on the same side SCM. So right here, this is my scalene. Oof, can you, can you tell by the way my fingers move and then it's like, it's on a really tough muscle there. 
so we're going to focus on that. So, um, let me see good. So I'm going to pin that down, just my finger here. And then I'm going to turn, oof, that's the winner, guys. We're going to really focus on trying to let wherever your spot is, we're not going to be the same. Even twins aren't the same. They hold tension in different places, right? None of us are the same. That's okay. I think diversity is a beautiful thing. All right, so I found myself creeping forward. So it's always good to check in, isolate, pin it down. Oh, my goodness. That is very intense for me. So I'm going to take a little bit less pressure. I'm going to take my own advice because I was actually feeling that go up into my head and down into my shoulders. So don't want that. So just a little bit less pressure. That way you can still have it, you know, pinpointed, but not in a negative sense. You don't want any negative feedback here. This should be an extremely positive experience for you. It should feel good. And if it hurts while you're doing it, it's gonna hurt more after, I promise. You do not want that. You want it to feel good so that you feel like you wanna do more of that. Okay, so the rotation, I feel like that, that was good. Um, if anybody gets um, like TMJ or a lot of grinding of the teeth, um, which if you get headaches, please have a dentist check your teeth to see if you're grinding, especially at night. So many people don't realize that they grind their teeth at night. And then what's happening is you're getting all this tension here and it's causing like a dysfunction with the uh, this area, um, which definitely, so a lot of people um, will have that extra tension. Uh oh, my internet's unstable. You're sounding okay right now. Now. Okay, good. All right, so um, just some jaw stuff. Um, since we're here, let me have a minute. We're going to go over some jaw stuff. Um, we can do the same sort of technique where we're working on the tissue while we're stretching. And what you want to do then is just find those spots. I need some water. <clears throat> As soon as I opened my jaw, I was like, oh, I have tension there. Um, and it just made my throat instantly dry. Okay, so what you want to do is just find those spots where you're holding that tension. Same idea. Let me actually turn here. Where you're finding, so if I bite down, you can see and you can feel that flex right there, right? So you're going to find that spot and then hold pressure. Make sure your posture is good. Hold pressure and then open. And again, what you're doing is manually stretching it. You're making it stretch. And if you find that you do have like discomfort in your jaw, um, I highly, highly recommend that you talk to your dentist because they'll be able to see if you have like extra wear on your molars. They'll know that you grind your teeth in your sleep and you can get a guard. And just wearing a guard at night will really help. Um, you won't be able to bite down. So you won't be able to flex those muscles as much and you'll have a much better um, time with that. So definitely wanted to talk about that jaw pain because so many people do suffer from that. Or gum chewers. Don't chew gum. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much for you. <laughs> All right, so I feel like we did pretty good with with that. It's hard. 
it's hard to kind of feel where you have the tension if you don't have any, right? Um, but if you have headaches, a lot of it's gonna come, if you have headaches around here, the temples and the base of the skull, a lot of it seems to come from the jaw. So I definitely wanted to touch base on that. Okay. All right, so let's just kind of close out the way that we started with just some basic shoulder rolls. And when I end my stretching with myself, I, I like to just kind of zone in and thank my body and my mind for being present and accepting my own self-love, my own self-worth. And so when you're rolling those shoulders, just feel it in like a wave coming over you of this nourishment that you gave yourself. You told yourself it was good. You are worthy of this love for yourself, right? It's coming at you. So when you do your, your nice uh, backward shoulder rolls, that's when you're feeling that wave coming over you. And when you go forward, that's that love coming out of you. You're now ready to give not just to yourself, but to others, because I think that's what ultimately we want to do. It feels good. <sighs> All right, guys. Do I look taller? <laughs> I feel like I probably grew like an inch. <laughs> so I think at this time, I just want to do my last slide where I'm just saying thank you for being in this space with me and um you know taking steps towards your recovery it's the biggest decision that anybody could ever make is to you know say no i'm worth more than this i want to do better i want to be better i want to feel better and i think that that is such a powerful thing that we can do for ourselves and somebody can tell you to do something over and over again and you won't do it until you take that initiative of saying you have that worth and you are worth it. You're worth this time to give yourself to work through these emotions and these feelings and the stresses that life throws at you. And so I definitely want to encourage you to take those times. It doesn't matter if it's five minutes or a minute, just take that time to show yourself some self-love and self-care and do things that will benefit your mind, body, and spirit. Thank you. So we're gonna do some questions if anybody has any. Yeah, so we do have a couple of questions in the chat, um, if, you, if it's okay if I read them to you. Sure. So um, uh, someone asked, how often should we be doing these stretches and massage? Okay, so there's really no max, I don't think. There's just some things that you want to look out for. Um, if you're rubbing too much without some sort of um, lubricant, whatever kind of oil lotion you're using, and your skin's becoming raw, that's definitely not good. Or if you're having some negative side effects, um, like I was saying um, in the beginning, this going forward one, if you pull down too far, you're kind of smashing the front of the disc. And if you have um, like a herniation or anything like that, it's gonna backfire on you. <laughs> so it's not necessarily that you can't do it as frequently. It's more that you need to just not go as far. You know, it's not about really pushing your limits. It's just accepting where your limits are and working with what you have. So um, if you could stretch every day before bed and when you first wake up, you're going to feel some huge benefits. If you're working throughout the day and you can take, you know, five, 10 minutes to just go through some basic stretches to keep that tension down, you're definitely going to benefit. If you spent, you know, 10, 12 hours a day stretching, that's probably too much. <laughs> But most of us would never do that, right? <laughs> so I don't, I don't really think that um, there's a max on that. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then uh, someone asked a question. Um, 
I know we couldn't, you, you couldn't fully uh, demonstrate the whole body today, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to ask if there some simple stretches you know for lower back pain. There are tons of um, great stretches for lower back pain. Um, I I can't really demonstrate them right now, um, but if we want to get like an email or contact information for that person specifically. I'd be happy to share like a YouTube video or something that that I would recommend would be good. That helps. I have lower back issues. So um, uh, definitely a great place to work. And um, if that's something that we want to make a video for in the future, I'd be happy to just do one specifically for the low back. It's, it's a major area. <laughs> awesome. Well, that kind of goes into my, my next question. Um, do you have any good resources, whether it be YouTube videos or books or uh, anything that you recommend for for doing this? Maybe even that expands past the shoulders and the neck. Yeah, absolutely. Um, YouTube, I am so thankful for YouTube. There are a tremendous amount of um, physical therapists and chiropractors specifically um, that, you know, they want to be YouTube famous. <laughs> so they're like, here's what you do, guys. And they show all these stretches for, you know, you can search a specific ailment, whether it's, you know, lower back pain, sciatica, um, and just make sure that it's from a professional you know, either a physical therapist or chiropractor, someone that's really studied that area of the body extensively to show, um, but they do full demonstrations of stretches. And then you would just kind of use those techniques that we use today where you're, where, wherever you feel that stretch, you apply pressure. And specifically with the low back, you can use like your, your, the ball of your fist if you're laying on your back and you put that kind of at the, at your hip bone, basically, where your hip kind of hits your, your spine there. There's a little nook there. We call that your SI joint. So if you put your fist there and you're just applying that steady pressure, then you're like, just say, lifting your legs straight up, stretching your hamstring. That's really going to help that low back stretch a little bit further. And again, you're promoting that, that mind body connection of like your you're really in control of that letting go. Another thing is you can use um, uh, like a racket ball. You know, they're like those blue, they're usually blue, and they have like a, not a tennis ball, because those are really hard, but the racket balls, they have like softness to them. So when you're laying like your full body weight on them, it's not, it's not super intense, but it, it gives you enough to just like kind of identify like that's where I'm holding the tension. Um, so it's really that idea of like pinpointing where it is and then doing that stretch with it to kind of trick it into relaxing. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. The yeah. very helpful information. I know. Um, I just want to say thank you for this presentation because I honestly feel so relaxed. Yes! I didn't realize like where this tension was and I just thought you did a wonderful um way of explaining how to find it and recognize it and yeah I just want to say thank you it was I'm it was so fun. glad and right what you're feeling right now those are natural endorphins <laughs> right right so it's a real thing but like see we don't really have the vocabulary to explain but you feel it and you know there's no words for that so it's good I'm so thankful to be a part of this and look at you man you, I wish we would have done before and after pictures because you're I'm probably am too I'm like yeah feeling good <laughs> so yeah. Uh, yeah I feel good well lastly I did want to ask um what's your favorite stretch for like daily or you oh. like do if you had to pick one <laughs> You know, I kind of talked about it a little bit um, doing the rag doll. Um, I'm not sure. Let me see if I can show it because it, it's it's really good for the low back too because you're, you know, you're stretching your low back. But if you let your head go too, then you're also getting 
like a full spine stretch. So let me see if I can, let me see, we'll, we'll try. <laughs> Let me see if I back this up a little bit here. I might have to adjust here. Okay, so, oh, definitely have to be there. I'm not sure what angle. So tell me if you can see, can you see my whole back here? Most of it. Most of it, yeah. Is it better like this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you can touch your feet, you know, that doesn't matter. What you're gonna to wanna to do is crisscross your arms and just let your body weight be your leverage. So I'm just holding my arms and I'm taking deep breaths in. And the first thing I do, I start personally at my low back and I just let my hips relax, okay? And just let the weight of my head and arms Pull my lower back and just let it open up. And as you exhale, you'll find you go further and further down. Because like I said, when we when we exhale, that's when we release, relax. So as you come, as you come up your spine, you'll feel it slowly let go. And as you get to your head, let's see if I can get a little more in here. You really let that head drop. And from this point, I usually like hang on to somewhere on my legs or behind my legs so that my arms can relax. And then I just move my head and just let it, just let it do its thing. And it's kind of, um, it's, it's like the opposite of, uh, you know, gravity. We're constantly upright. And so when you're upside down, a lot of people use like an inversion table or something like that, but you can kind of recreate that with just yourself. Um, and I do that all the time. I'm just taking a walk on the beach or whatever. I'll just stop for a second and just, just let that spine relax. Awesome. Yeah. We did have a question, uh, a couple of questions about that uh, stretch specifically. One was, do you keep your legs locked in or can your knees bend while doing it? Um, you're definitely going to um, listen to your body on that one. <laughs> so um, your hamstrings are very much connected to your low back. So if your low back is really um, tense and uh, hurting, bend your knees slightly um, for sure. If you're loosened up and you're not feeling it enough, then you would want to really focus on straightening your legs. But when your legs are straight, you have extra tension on that nerve. So you can, you can do less or more on that nerve depending on your own personal needs. So if it's hurting you and it's too intense, yes, bend the knees. <laughs> and I wonder if this next question is kind of answered by that, but um, someone asked, can people with a disc issue uh, do this stretch also? Um, I don't want to give any like formal advice on that because it's, it's not really my scope of practice. I'm not a doctor. Um, I have found that people can, um, without discomfort, but again, you really need to listen to your body. If it's hurting while you do it, you're irritating that nerve and it's going to yell at you later. <laughs> it's gonna so um you know listen to your body just bend your knees a little bit take that pressure off a little bit but allow your spine to relax upward so your legs are bent downward so that you can still you know participate in letting the spine relax wonderful yeah. well thank you so much um yeah. yes lastly i just want to um ask is there anything you'd like to leave everyone with advice last you know words oh i i think i just want to make sure that everyone feels that when they do these things that they're in a safe place um to really let go and and be vulnerable 
uh, you learn countless things about yourself. <laughs> I know when I went to massage school, I was in a horrible place mentally and spiritually, and I, I didn't accept who I was and or or I had no idea who I wanted to be either and I got I had to get in tune with my body like I didn't want to be touched I didn't I didn't want anybody to see me naked there were all these things that were in my mind but when once I let that go and I was comfortable enough around people to do that I learned so much about myself and me giving you these tools you're able to do them wherever. So you can be in the privacy of your own home or you know wherever you have a quiet space and just give yourself that opportunity to really dive in, dig deep and figure out what's causing that tension. What is it? And as soon as you realize what it is, you have the power. You have the power to control it at that point. And that's a huge gift, especially when we're dealing with recovery, right? There's always going to be triggers that are going to make you want to do this, that, or the other. But when you can really have that mental awareness of what's causing all that tension and that feeling of wanting to go back, you can then go forward. <laughs> so it's good. And I'm, I'm available. I'm not currently doing massage because of COVID, but... Um, I do have an active Facebook page and I'm happy to answer any questions or, you know, send people um, links to specific YouTube videos that, you know, might be helpful. And um, I'm, I'm happy to be a resource and share information. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I just want to, again, personally, thank you. Um, I felt like this went beyond just you know physical also like it really brings up emotions as well and so i really i really uh appreciated this um workshop today and Yay. very heavy and something that you know everyone needs and so hopefully in the future yeah. we'll do this again <laughs> i would be happy to and you know once COVID's done it doesn't have to be virtual we could really do some some great work i think to just share people and our surroundings I mean, it's beautiful everywhere here. And I, I love how you, you open with thanking our land and the stewards of that land. It's such a big, I got chills now. <laughs> That's such a big thing for me because it's, it's a blessing. And uh, it's crazy times we're living in. We all need to learn how to just keep going, you know. And learning to relax is a huge part of that. You have to have that downtime. You can't just go, 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 go. You're going to be burn the wheel <laughs> so yeah well thank you so much stephania i really appreciated um your workshop today and we had a lot of gratitude um for you in on the lives so we just want to say thank you and Yay. we really appreciate it i am so happy to be a part of this you guys are amazing let's just keep doing it <laughs> definitely all right everyone take care you too Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Um, and thank you to everyone watching. Um, before we leave, as always, um, oh, Jermaine, did you have something? Okay. <laughs> just want to make sure. Um, so I just want to um, remind everyone um, of the Wellness and Recovery series that's still going on. Um, we have one week after this. Um, because we are on our fourth week. Uh, it went by super fast and um, it's been filled with so many amazing workshops and presenters and I just can't um, thank them enough for working with us and you know being able to share so much knowledge with us. It's been amazing. So I just want to say thank you to all of our presenters and all the people engaging and being a part of it. Um, you all have made this happen as well. So I just want, because we do have a week left, um, a week and a day, <laughs> I do want to invite everyone to still register through our Eventbrite at the wellness and recovery series.eventbrite.com. We're still going to be having uh, live presentations Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday until July 30th. 
and um, we will we'll be going out uh, Zoom and of course Facebook Live as usual and to stay up to date and informed. Um, remember to register for Eventbrite or just, you know, keep checking in on it if you already have. And you can also just follow us on the Facebook um, page for the Wellness and Recovery series. We still have the Wellness Art Challenge going on. The deadline's July 27th. So that is Monday. Um, we encourage you all to uh, input a a little piece. It does not have to be a drawing. It can be writing. It can be a collage. It can be a video, a picture, anything you want. But we just ask that you tell us what your wellness activity is. And um, you, if you scan it or take a picture of it and upload it to social media using our hashtags, you can also email it to us at rxsafedelnor at gmail.com you will be entered into the raffle. And there are different age groups, so make sure to include your the name of the artist and the age group. We have age groups 0 to 5, 5 to 9, 10 to 14, 14 to 24, and 24 and up is adults. You can download the PDF um, for the Wellness Art Challenge on the Wellness and Recovery Facebook page, or if you're registered on Eventbrite, it will also be there. So make sure you get that in. Uh, it's just a fun little activity. Let us know what your wellness activity is. It's not too late to enter. And we are on the second to last week. Um, wonderful uh, presentation today from Stephania with for the self massage and um, you know self care really. And it was uh, we love. Wellness Wednesdays. <laughs> I personally <laughs> Wellness Wednesdays. I always feel so much better after. But tomorrow morning we do have our uh, the Narcan training. I believe it's Jermaine. It had a different name. The Net Tender. Net Tenders. Yes. So Safety that will be tomorrow at ten thirty a.m. to about eleven thirty um, to twelve. So make sure you join in on that so that you can get trained on how to use Narcan. And uh, if you happen to um, witness someone go into an overdose, it's a very important skill to have. Everyone should be trained up on it and you can receive Narcan and a $50 stipend for joining tomorrow. So make sure to join that. And um, next week, if we have a full week and we will be looking at our closeout event next Thursday, so you still are welcome to join in if you're just jumping on now. Um, we'll have some amazing workshops for this next week. And as always, just thank you to all of our um, people who have watched today. Thank you to our pre presenter. Thank you to all the people who helped make this happen, our little team. Um, you're all amazing. And I just wanna say, yeah, give gratitude to everyone. Um, if you wanna stay involved, follow the Facebook page for the event, Wellness and Recovery Series. Or you can, again, register for Eventbrite. And if you wanna know more about ARC Safe Del Norte, you can check out our website or our Facebook page. And as always, there is an evaluation at the end of every presentation. The link for our evaluation form will be in the chat on Facebook Live and Zoom. And um, make sure you fill out this evaluation form. It's pretty easy, just a few questions, answer them the best you can. And each completed evaluation is an entry into the raffle. We're gonna have some awesome prizes, which will be announced on our um, last day. So make sure you fill out those evals after you join every presentation and you can get into our raffle. So again, thank you to our presenters today, um, our presenter today and um, everyone who joined in and our team just want to say thank you and we appreciate having you and yeah, everyone have a wonderful afternoon.